I'm Michelle Leifler, the Vice President of Health Information Technology Services and the CIO at Hamilton Health Sciences. I don't think there's a day goes by that AI is not a conversation of meetings here or my mailbox filling or my voicemail filling as I think it is with anybody in the sector. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to be frank. Uh, I think um, we need to be mindful and 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 have some process. I think one of the challenges around AI, not necessarily only in healthcare, is that there, with the explosion of potential, uh, the the challenge that I'm facing is that there's so many niche companies professing to be the add-on that you need, and then there's our partners. It's a challenge, frankly, to keep up uh, for all of us, and it's a challenge to sift through potential and noise. Um, don't want to be chasing every shiny company down, although it's attractive some days to listen to these small niche companies. You have to do this with some strategy and, of course, um, what it's going to serve your organization, where it can play. I mean, practically in terms of AI, I think there's, I, I'd say there's three avenues, at least for our team in terms of healthcare that we're looking at. Um, some that might be lagging and some that are uh, not so lagging. But if I look at the administrative type work, uh, we've spent, it's, as a healthcare organization, we spent a lot of time talking about clinical work. And that's obvious because we're here for our patients. But in some of the administrative areas, IT, uh, human resources, finance, there is still a lot of uh, pro opportunity for uh, process, RPA uh, and AI to aid in there. Our help desk here is still incredibly busy with lots of calls that come in. We're probably lagging in the 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 implementation of the AI components there. And I don't think that just like the chatbot component, which is something on our radar, but to really leverage it to make effective change. So help us as an example. We can, it can, AI can be summarizing and combing a lot of data to be able to help people on the fly. Most of my interactions with my bank and everywhere else is by chatbot. It's, it's rare until I get stuck that I'm on to a different topic. But the value to me is not necessarily that we're freeing up phone time. The value is that behind the scenes, AI is, is learning and understanding what are the common calls? What are the common challenges? How do we look at what it's bringing to its surfacing desk to say, like, what's the opportunity for creating efficiencies for people that are here so that they are not as overburdened? What can we do? Uh, we are... Um, very interested and are working through the process to to bring in ambient AI. You know, our EHRs have been fantastic. We have amazing amounts of data now. But with that, it also means that our providers, be they a physician or a nurse, are having to spend overhead entering information into the electronic health record. And that, that real personal touch with your physician has changed. When I go to my family doctor, he starts every every meeting by every interaction by saying, just note, I'm going to be typing in the computer while we're talking. And I think, okay, well, I work in IT, so I understand it. But it's very, it's, it's the model of how you're interacting is has changed substantially with IT. So ambient, the notion of AI just listening, letting me have a conversation with Christian or my doctor, having a conversation free-flowing, um, which will obviously touch on things that are extraneous, but having an AI capability to listen understand, serve up a draft document, removing the extraneous and irrelevant information is very attractive in terms of not only efficiency for our providers, but really like improving that patient engagement again. You know, I'm very passionate about the opportunity with precision medicine is like I'm passionate with precision medicine. And there's such an opportunity, I think, with the wealth of information, the years and years and years and years of clinical trials and other things that no human can really readily compute or digest. So how can AI for uh, precision and targeted treatments evolve? Uh, we are going to begin to explore this in genomics and understand where for our cancer programs that this might be an area that we diligently and um, cautiously dip into. Predictive models, cognitive models, all predictive analytics, those aren't new terms. Uh, but the models are continuing to evolve. And if we can leverage them and ingrain them in workflows so they're supporting um, stretched resources, I think there's some great opportunity there. <laughs>